Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to DB Overland and welcome to this episode of Overland Garage where I show you guys how to make low bars for an ordinary camper so then that way you can mount your rooftop tent and make a standard canopy the ultimate overlanding setup. Got the truck in the shop. Now it's time to start accessorizing it. And this is the fun part, right? <laughs> Look at that. Oh yeah. Sweet. So here's my idea, okay? What I need to do is I need to build load bars on the top of the canopy so then that way I can mount my wedge tent on top. So here's what I'm going to use. I dug through my uh, scrap steel and I found this material. This is two inches by one inch by eighth inch wall tubing and this is going to be perfect this is going to be for what the tent is going to mount on so the tent is going to sit on this and i'm going to make some mounts that come off of it for the hardware because i don't want to go through the center of this for the hardware and i will explain and why I'm not going to have it go through here. So that's going to be my load bar material. These are going to be my uprights. So I have to raise my load bar up because of one particular reason. And I'm short, so let me get my ladder here. This is why, right here. So my tent is over six feet long. So it's gonna start at the back of the canopy and no, it's longer than six feet. I think it's gonna come to like right here. So I need to raise this up. So then that way the tent will clear my rack and that is why I took the boxes off because my tent now that I remember correctly I think my tent is eight feet long so we're going to be somewhere over in this area with the end of the tent so I needed to raise this up high enough to where the rails of the tent are going to clear the roof rack so that is why I have those risers and the material that I'm using is just some recycled material that I had. It's a uh, two inch by two inch by one sixteenth wall, I believe. Yep. Square tubing. So that's going to be my risers. And then for my, the mounting pads, I am going to use this four by four by eighth inch flat strap. And this is gonna be, this is gonna be cut into four by four squares because we're four inches this way. So I'll make them four inches long. And then this guy will be welded in the center of that four by four square. And then I'll have my four holes for my mounting hardware and you know whenever i let's say i need to cut it like that high then this will be welded on top of there so got a nice pad to disperse the weight of the tent nice area to mount the tent to bam easy now i just got to do the work right <laughs> all right let's get this project kicked off First off, I'm going to cut the base plates and the backing plates for the load bars.
After I got all of the mounting plates and backing plates cut and deburred, I laid out where I will be drilling the holes for the hardware. Each base plate will have four bolts holding it down to the canopy. All right, just spent a little bit of time deburring these buggerts, but I got all of my plates, look at that, ready to go. Nice and radiused, deburred so I won't cut my fingers. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, so what I need to do next is I need to lay out this bolt pattern on the roof of the canopy. And I think the best way for me to do it is to come in from the inside, right? Have this up against the ceiling and then I can run my drill up through the holes and what that'll do is it'll make sure that I drill through that reinforced section because if I try to come in from the top it's going to be a big pain in the butt to try to measure everything out and whatnot so I'll come in from the bottom where I can see where the reinforcement part is. So I think that's going to be my next step is I'm going to climb my butt up in there and then I'm just going to start running the drill up through to transfer my pattern and then we can set the pads on top and then we can figure out our height and start going from there. Cutting, cutting, welding, welding, oh yeah. Alrighty, let's see if I can get my big butt in here. Whoa, he's done. Easy. Oh, oh, geez. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Alright. So, pull that drill. Okay. Oh, this is going to be lovely. I'm going to have fiberglass raining down on me. So, this is kind of what I was thinking. I'm going to put these two back pads in the corners of this reinforced area and then in the front I will probably go as far forward as possible just because we're gonna have a lot of that tent hanging past and over the cat the cab there's that one this is awfully fun to try to hold. And that one. And there's that one. Alright. I got those marked. Now, try to make sure that the Drill straight up and down. Actually, yeah, I need to make sure I'm kind of, because that's a little bit of curve, so I better make sure like I'm pretty, you know, straight. There we go. Okay. This is lovely, I'm getting a buttload of fiberglass all over me. And I forgot to get my glasses. Ugh. Well, one down, three to go. I think I'll grab my glasses for the other three. <laughs> oh, this sucks. And I better blow myself off. <laughs> I'm gonna be itchy tonight. Nice. All right. 
Well, I got all of my mounting plates bolted down. And now let's see what I need to do for my risers. So, let's see here. Fine. Kind of going off of the middle of that plate. So right here it's showing that I've got three and one eighth of an inch from the top of this plate to the top of this rack. Now, I want to go more than that. So I think what I'll do is on the lowest side of this pad because the pad's not sitting perfectly flat. I think I'll do four inches to the top of my um, rack. And the reason being is, let's say this is the tent, right? Well, I want the tent to be above the rack a little bit because you actually get quite a bit of flex in your vehicle frame between the bed and the canopy. I've actually looked in the rear view mirror and watched as it does this. You know, you'll see the cat, the bed actually going like this and stuff. So you, you need to actually give it some clearance and boy, I might actually go higher than that. Um, because at, if I go four inch, four inches to the top of my support, that, that gives me only seven eighths of an inch clearance and I have a feeling this is gonna flex a whole lot more than that. So let's, let's give it like a full inch and a half maybe. Yeah. Or if I go more than that, then I can maybe give myself a little bit of working room to be able to store something thin like a table on the rack underneath the tent. Hmm. I'm gonna have to think on that a little bit, but at least I have a baseline of knowing that the risers need to be higher than three and one eighth because that gets me flush with the top of the rack. So, I'll kind of ponder a little bit on what I want to do and then I'll just start cutting. <laughs> oh, this is going to be awesome. Okay, Let's see if I can't uh, oh, get down with falling without falling. Oh, made it. After 15 minutes of going back and forth in my head, I finally decided on a height for the risers. I decided to go with the minimal amount of clearance between the bottom of the tent and the top of the roof rack just to try to keep everything as low profile as possible. <laughs> All right. Well, check that out. <laughs> so that distance right there, that's pretty much what I was thinking for distance. And I'm liking that. Now I set this piece of angle iron up here to kind of mimic the tent mount, you know, mounted on top. And I'm liking how that's looking. Yes, definitely. And I like this gap here because like I said, you know, you do get some movement between this and the bed and the cab. So I wanted to make sure that there was enough space there for the movement uh, between the two. So, 
I really like how this looks. So now I need to come up here and I need to tack weld in these corners, uh, these uprights to the plates and make sure that everything is squared up nicely. And then when I get everything tacked, then we can pull the plates or the whole bars off and then I can weld them up down on the bench instead of up here and burning through the paint and the fiberglass and all that stuff. Good morning everyone. Well, I got the load bars painted yesterday and I wanted to at least let them sit overnight. So then that way when I go to mount the tent and when I go to mount those, they're nice and dry, don't have any issues. Except for last night when I was painting them, one of them totally dropped on me. <laughs> I was so bummed out. <laughs> And there was nothing I could do to clean it off. So, yeah, it's got a little bit of dirt on it, but oh well. So, now, since we got them, they're nice and dry, and I can work with them, let's get them mounted on top of the canopy, and then let's get the truck pulled out and get the rooftop tent mounted. I don't want to have any rain come into the canopy and even with having the rack mounted on top water's still gonna slip in so I'm gonna use some silicone and you can use like black RVT gasket material anything that is a rubbery or silicon based will work and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some on my lower plate. And my theory behind this is, ooh, that stuff's gooey. <laughs> my theory is that it might be a little bit easier to deal with the goo, per se, you know, if you were to come up from the bottom versus the top because you go to try to put goo around the holes and then you know you set the rack on and then you got to move in and then next thing you know you got goo everywhere and especially on the outside where people can see it and then you're just like well this flipping sucks so on the inside it's not as critical if it oozes out and people can see it. So, 
that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna stick this up there and it'll ooze all around the bolts and it'll fill into the holes around the bolts and it will be nice and watertight. Hopefully. <laughs> That'll work. Sweet. Just nice and snug and tight. Ugh. I love how this canopy setup is turning out and the load bars worked out perfect and actually gave me plenty of room to experiment with a few other things that I would like to add to this canopy setup. Having this canopy on the back of the truck has been very nice especially with the weather and all of the atmosphere just driving down the road. Well, stay tuned for part three, where we continue the build of the DIY Ultimate Overlanding Canopy Setup. Don't forget to subscribe, pass this video on to friends and family, hit that notification bell so you won't miss any Overland Garage episodes. And until next time, we'll see you guys out on the trail.